hey guys welcome back to my channel rewind that it's your girl miss k today we're going to be going over the latest episode of lovecraft country called whitey's on the moon all right so this is season one episode number two okay before we get started i just want to send a special shout out to all my subscribers old and new thank you so much for riding with me all right all right let's get into this episode guys it starts off with uncle george and letty feeling like they're in heaven because they're in a room surrounded by their favorite things in uncle george's room he has a bookshelf filled with his favorite books in Letty's room, there's all these fabulous and fashionable clothes. So while Letty and Uncle George are in their glory, right, Tick is in his room and he's very troubled because of all the things that he's thinking about. Like he's thinking about everything that happened from the night before when they were attacked by monsters. So a bell rings in the house, which makes Tick, Letty and Uncle George come out of their rooms. And a man named William comes to escort them to lunch. Now, William seems like he could be a butler, but he's actually a friend of Christina Braithwaite, the woman who'd been following them around in the first episode. Okay, another thing I want to say about William is that he kind of has the same look as Christina, right? She has really, really blonde hair and blue eyes. You know, it's not like regular blonde. It's light, light, light blonde. And so it, it looks unnatural is basically what I'm trying to say. Almost children of the damnish type of blonde, but then that's kind of white, I guess. Anyway, we will see also that her father has that same look, that kind of blondish whitish hair i want to say targaryenish if you watch game of thrones but they all kind of have that same look that we see all right anyway so they get to lunch and letty sits down to eat tick looks at her like she's crazy because he can't believe she can even eat after what happened last night so tick asks her like how can you eat after everything that happened last night but when Letty tries to answer, she draws a blank and lets Tick know that she doesn't remember what happened last night. And Uncle George doesn't remember either. So you can already imagine how crazy Tick sounded to them when he told them that they were attacked by monsters last night. Even Uncle George's car was recovered without a scratch on it. And in the last episode, that car got banged up, guys, okay? Anyway, during their walk through the village, Letty tells Uncle George that she's a little concerned about Tick and maybe he has shell shock from being in the war. But Tick overhears her and lets her know that it's not shell shock. He reminded Uncle George and Letty how strange it was for, number one, Uncle George to be placed in a room with all of his favorite books and for number two, Letty to have a wardrobe filled with clothes that are her exact size. But before they could respond, a high-pitched whistle blows. Now, this is the same whistle heard in the first episode that called off the monsters. So they see a woman standing in front of a stone building, and Uncle George wants to know if she's the sheriff. He also wants to know if that building is the jail. But the woman tells him that they get black bears coming into the village. You know, it's not a jail, but in the stone building is where they keep the guard dogs. Anyway, she tells him that they should head back to the mansion or lodge, whatever it is, before the sun goes down. There we go again with that sun going down stuff. So they start heading back and they discuss that they think Tick's father is being held in the stone building where most likely there's a dungeon down there. And with the dogs barking and things like that, you wouldn't be able to hear anybody screaming, right? So then Uncle George mentions that Tick's mother once told him something about her ancestors. She told him that her great ancestor was a slave named Hannah and that she escaped her master's house after a fire. Now, Hannah's master was Titus Braithwaite, the founder of the lodge they're staying at now. Long story short, they put it together that Hannah was pregnant with Titus's baby, which explains Tick's secret birthright. Anyway, by now it's dark in the woods and they start hearing rustling in the trees and suddenly the monsters come out of the ground and of course they're terrified and they're surrounded, right? But before they could be devoured by these creatures, that high pitch whistle blows again and the monsters back down and run off. This time we see who's controlling these monsters and it's Christina Braithwaite who comes in riding on a horse. So Christina has the trio escorted back to the lodge, but before they head back, Uncle George and Letty want to know 
why they're covered in dirt. So we see that their memory has been wiped out again. Anyway, once they get back to the lodge, they are separated from each other and go back to their rooms. So Tick is able to have a conversation with Christina who confirms that she was the one helping them during their troubles on the road. She tells Tick that he should consider making new friends and that not all white people are out to get him. But Tick tells her that if she wants to be friends, she should tell him where his father is. But she tells him that she can't do that. But when Tick bargains to have her break the spell that causes Uncle George and Letty to forget everything that happens, she agrees to do that. Now, before Tick was escorted to his room, he was taken to meet Christina's father, Samuel Braithwaite, who is obsessed with being immortal. And he believes that Tick can help him with this. Okay, now, while Uncle George and Letty's memory is being restored, Tick could hear Letty screaming because she's freaked out now, right? But when Tick tries to run to her, there's an invisible block or wall in his doorway and he can't pass. So while Tick, Letty, and Uncle George are locked in their rooms, they each start having these delusions and they're confronted with things of the past. For Tick, it's a Korean woman trying to kill him and he's fighting her off. This woman may have also been a love interest of his while he was overseas at war. Anyway, in the delusion, he winds up killing this woman by choking her to death. Now, this might have really happened to Tick in the past, but for now, it's unclear of exactly what happened while he was overseas, but something definitely happened because after all this was said and done, he told Letty and Uncle George that something bad happened while he was over there, okay? Moving on to Uncle George, whose delusion involved a dead woman named Dora, so Uncle George is talking with her and they slow dance and I believe this woman may have been like the love of his life or something but she also mentioned Montrose which is Tick's father. But something just didn't sit well with Uncle George's delusion because first of all he has a whole wife and daughter but he's dancing with this dead woman who mentions to him that he could actually fly with his children. And when she said that I was like wait what what children he only has one child you know but we're gonna get back to that a little later now we get to letty and in her delusion she's talking to tick as if they're in the present right they're speaking about the monsters they've seen and the horrible ordeal they just gone through but she eventually starts talking about a past traumatic experience when her mother left her for days she left her alone for days with like nobody to take care of her so tick turns to her and says i'll never abandon you so they start kissing and undressing but suddenly letty wants tick to stop unbuckling his pants only he doesn't stop and a snake jumps out of his pants and straight at her so while she's freaking out, she's being watched through this glass that, of course, she can't see. But the people that are watching her are a part of this secret society, and they're all white. And Christina's father is the leader, and I believe they're called uh, the Sons of Adam. So these men aren't just watching Letty. They're watching Tick and Uncle George, too, and laughing and just getting a kick out of what these guys are going through. Eventually, it all stops, and William comes to tell Tick and Uncle George that they've been invited to dinner which is a black tie only affair so when they get to the dinner uncle george and tick waste no time in letting these guys know that tick is an heir to titus braithwaite and because of this tick automatically has a spot in the secret society which also means that he has special rank which gives him authority so he can give orders just because of his birthright so tick takes advantage of this authority and gives all the men in order to leave all except Samuel so the men leave and Tick tries to pull the same thing on Samuel and orders him to return his father to him but Samuel wasn't moved he let Tick know that he's not a zealot and that his beliefs have limits he then tells Tick that he's a reservoir of Titus's power and he wants to use Tick's body for the work he has to do he also tells Tick not to mistake useful with indispensable next uncle george and tick break into the stone building to look for montrose so they don't find him in the dungeon but they do find a spot where montrose dug himself a tunnel so he could escape so they go outside and find montrose who had just crawled up out of the ground instead of being happy to see them he scolds tick 
But they have no time for arguments because they need to get the heck out of Dodge. So of all the cars, they steal the silver sedan that was following them throughout last week's episode. Now, as they drive over a bridge, they hit what seems to be an invisible wall. So the car is pretty crashed up now and we can see that the Braithwaites are all about using spells to get their way, right? So Samuel and Christina Braithwaite, they pull up behind them and Samuel gets out of the car with a gun in his hand. Uncle George, Tick, Montrose, and Letty are also getting out of the sedan. So as soon as Letty gets out the car, he shoots her without hesitation and she appears to have died pretty quickly. And of course we know that Letty wasn't going to stay dead because she's a main character. Anyway, Samuel strikes a deal with Tick. He basically wants to use Tick's body to help him become immortal in exchange for bringing Letty back to life and tailing Uncle George because he wound up shooting him too. So while Uncle George is bleeding out, he starts making small talk with Montrose, but eventually tells him that he needs to show Tick the real love inside of him before it's too late. So Montrose says, how many times do I have to tell you that I don't need your advice when it comes to raising my son? Then Uncle George says, he might not be yours. And I honestly wasn't surprised when he said this, guys, because I kind of had a feeling that Dora, the dead woman he was dancing with in his delusion, was Tick's mother. They never confirmed it, but I'm thinking in time they will. So Montrose didn't seem shocked either because he tells Uncle George that he doesn't care that he has a bullet in his gut. And he says, we settled that a long time ago. Now you shut your mouth. And Uncle George just says, I know, I know. We agreed we wouldn't speak of it, but I have to now because you might be all Tick has left. Of course, by now I'm thinking they had an affair with the same woman and Uncle George could possibly be Tick's real dad. So next, Tick is being put through this ritual where Samuel is reciting spells and there's all sorts of electrical frequencies flowing through his body. You know, he just looks like he's being electrocuted like a thousand times over. But suddenly he looks down at this ring that Christina put on his finger. The ring looks like it's sprouting a vine or something, but it's just black smoke that starts wrapping around his body. So he raises his hand and he sees his great ancestor, Hannah, and she's just looking at him. Suddenly the spell stops working and instead the lodge is starting to fall apart. Then Tick lets out this scream and it causes Samuel to turn into stone and the lodge caves in and a fire starts. So Tick is now running through the halls and he makes it out alive. But for a short moment, he feels terrible because he thinks his people are left inside. But just then, Letty calls his name and runs to him and gives him a big hug. Of course, Tick is relieved, but Letty gives him a look that lets him know not all survived. So Tick and Letty walk to the car and find that Uncle George bled out and died. Now, this scene was very emotional and so sad, especially with the song that they were playing. That song to me is kind of sad. And I was a little disappointed because I already liked Uncle George and I didn't think he was going to leave the show so soon. But he's gone and that's how the episode ended, guys. I also want to bring up that I think Christina helped Tick escape the ritual by giving him that ring. As she put the ring on his hand, she told Tick that their destinies are not decided by their fathers or grandfathers. Then she says the smallest, most inconsequential thing can take you on a new course. Now, the ring she put on his hand was some kind of signet ring. And, you know, I know that since he's now a member of the Sons of Adam, he had to wear it, right? But I feel like the thing that she said to Tick helped him escape. Anyway, what do I know, right? I mean, since I haven't read any Lovecraft books, I might not be able to break things down as good as some other folks do. But I think being some kind of a Lovecraft virgin is good too, because I'm right here with the rest of the folks that haven't read the books either. You know what I mean? So it's like we're all on this journey together. Anyway, guys, that was my video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what y'all thought of the episode. If you haven't started watching it yet, hopefully you do check it out, okay? Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. Take care and be blessed. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.